Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the Federation for Children with Special Needs. Um, my name is Rebecca Davis. I am the Director of Transition Projects. And thank you so much for uh, meeting with us this evening. We're going to be talking about the Next Gen Careers Initiative with their Strategic Director, Michelle Banks. Um, but first, <clears throat> I would ask you to uh, try to keep yourself muted if you can. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat uh, and or add them to the Q&A and we will keep a running list of them and we will put those in at the end and get to as many as we can. Um, at this point, I would like to give our interpreters a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, Carlos, would you like to start? Okay, now is, what, what happened was the interpretation language was there. Yeah. Now it's not. Uh, my, uh, buena, good evening, uh, buenas noches. My name is Carlos. I uh, will be the interpreter uh, for the Spanish language. Yo sería el intérprete de español. Y Marilyn también nos va a acompañar. Marilyn is going to be here with us in the Spanish. We will have two interpreters in the Spanish, Marilyn and myself. Um, in order to listen to this presentation in Spanish, uh, Para escuchar esta presentación en español, tiene que hacer clic en el globo cuando salga, porque en este momento no ha salido todavía la, el globo, no les ha salido el globo. Al no más salir el globo, tienen que clicar en el idioma y escoger español y mute original audio. O sea que sería eh, apagar el audio original. Y entonces me van a estar escuchando a mí en el canal de español. Thank you. Thank you. Boa noite e bem-vindos à nossa sessão de hoje. Hoje nós teremos a Michelle Banks, que irá conversar conosco a respeito do Next Gen, uma visão geral, uma apresentação para a carreira e suas famílias. Esta apresentação será também traduzida para o português, E para fazer a seleção do idioma, dentro de alguns minutos, vocês verão na parte inferior da tela do Zoom um globo. Por favor, clique no globo, selecione o idioma que você quiser, ou seja, português ou espanhol. Depois que selecionar o idioma, por favor, coloque o áudio original no mudo e mantenha os seus microfones também ah, no mudo. Obrigada. Thank you. And for anyone who's joining us now, uh, welcome to the Next Gen Careers Overview with our um, Next Gen Strategic Director, Michelle Banks. Please mute yourself if you haven't already. Um, can, you please, are... can you please enable the interpretation feature? We can do that. Has it been enabled? So this is Ana Yes, Lopes. it has. Uh, Ana Lopes was not assigned as an interpreter. Okay, I'll try to reassign you. Hold on, Ana. Is it okay if we move forward while that works or should we wait? Uh, just wait one moment, please. We can certainly do that, okay. So thank you again. Uh, welcome to uh, this evening's introduction to Next Gen Careers Initiative with their strategic director, Michelle Banks. We will be starting in just a moment. Uh, this evening's presentation is offered in simultaneous Portuguese and Spanish and American Sign Language. Thank you. 
Okay, I believe everyone has now been added. Need a thumbs up, okay. So are we all right to begin and let Michelle Banks take it away? Michelle, you can take it away. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Yvonne, for being such great partners to Next Gen Careers and helping us reach families and potential next geners um, who could benefit from what we believe is going to be an incredibly valuable service. Um, my name is Michelle Banks. It's such a pleasure to be here with everyone tonight to talk about the Next Gen Careers Program at the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. Uh, as Rebecca mentioned, I'm the Strategic Director for Next Gen Careers meaning I work with the program uh, in its implementation phase, in building it and outreaching to communities and working with stakeholders, and most importantly, working with next geners themselves and their families to receive feedback and, um, and make appropriate changes and improvements to the program throughout our, uh, the years that we'll be implementing it. Um, I wanna thank the Federation, like I said, uh, who have been wonderful close partners from the design phase of this work and are helping me tonight to get it out to all of you. And I wanna thank all of you for coming during uh, probably what was the end of a busy Monday to hear about Next Gen Careers. Um, one moment, need to just, I'll be advancing a slide deck here. And that's the wrong way. <laughs> Excuse me one sec. I'm just going to move it back to the beginning. Okay. So what is Next Gen Careers? This is a special program provided by the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission for young adults with disabilities who are 18 to 30 years old to help them explore the world of work and discover a career pathway. The program is seeking to enroll 1,000 young adults from across the Commonwealth, but in targeted geographic areas up until June 2026. We are testing out new ways to help young adults on their job journey. We have an existing successful model of vocational rehabilitation here in Massachusetts, but we're looking to build on that and focus specifically on some communities that we feel like we could include better and get better outcomes with. And I'll talk to you about those communities in a few moments. For the duration of the Next Gen program, we'll be serving the catchment areas of seven area offices of the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission in three different regions. So in the North, that's the catchment area of the Lawrence and Lowell MRC offices. In the south, it's the catchment area of the downtown Boston, Roxbury, and Braintree. And in the west, that's in Springfield and Worcester. Now, what does that all mean? It means we're limited until June 2026 to serve all the cities and towns that are available on this slide. And my understanding is uh, Rebecca and Yvonne will be making this, uh, this slide deck available to all of you and as well as the recording of the presentation. So if you're furiously looking for your city or town right now, don't worry, we'll, this won't be the last you see of this. Um, the hope is, is that as we're trying out these new um, models of intervention to help young adults explore the world of work, we're gonna see what works, we're gonna see what can go into other populations and demographics, and we're gonna um, make those available across the state eventually to everybody. Um, I wanna to talk to you about some core components. What are these new things that, that um, we're doing in NextGen? So we call our young adults next geners. And they are at the center of a team of people, a multidisciplinary team that offer a variety of skills and expertise to support an employment goal. If next geners want, their families can receive support from this team as well. 
So we have a number of roles available to next geners from the moment they walk into our doors or we walk into theirs, um, which is career counseling, uh, job placement through employment success specialists who understand the um, strengths of a next gener, their interests and matches them on an appropriate training program or career path. We have family partners on staff that work with families. They work closely with benefits counselors that we have in NextGen that help families and NextGeners really understand um, what the benefit impact is to their chosen career path. Um, and we have specialty counselors as well. These specialty counselors are focused on um, sensory, uh, young adults who have sensory disabilities including blind, low vision, deaf, hard of hearing, next geners. Um, we're focusing on career preparedness. So we're in assessing and enhancing factors associated with career self-actualization. What is that? Career self-actualization is really understanding who you want to be as a professional, what type of work you want to do that's going to gratify you, what type of money you wanna make to support the lifestyle of your choosing and understanding that you are feeling supported and that you can be successful in your chosen path. That's self-actualization. We have a learning experience known as self-cares. Um, and I can talk a little bit about that uh, later on in the presentation, but we're helping our participants improve their preparation for their careers. So we're focusing on self-advocacy, self-realization, self-sufficiency, and self-capacity. So knowing internally what I'm interested in and capable of, um, which we know developing those internal capacities will help next geners uh, choose the right career path and be able to stay in it when it gets tough, as we know all careers do. We are um, offering short work-based learning opportunities, particularly in the field of STEM, including internships and apprenticeships. Um, the first question I usually get when I'm talking to next geners and their families is what if I don't wanna study STEM or what if I don't want, I'm not interested in a STEM field. And that's fine. It, next geners are the center of our work and we follow where they lead us. So if their career path is something outside of STEM, we are gonna support that that and help them be successful. But we're also going to educate them on what's available to them in the STEM field and where they may have a fit there now or in the future. In next gen careers, we're also offering career extended support. So on the jobs problem solving to help maintain employment, counseling to prepare for promotional opportunities and identify those career ladders and other supports to promote independence. So why are we so focused on STEM careers? Um, most STEM jobs are in high demand, but they're suffering from a lack of qualified candidates. And we're getting the intention of STEM employers who we know need to develop their workforce and are leaning into the concept of inclusivity, finally, in order to meet their own needs. Persons with lived experience with a disability often acquire academic, technical, and self-determination skills, and they find ways to overcome barriers. Um, these are valued skills in STEM fields. A uh, report from the Commonwealth Corporation a couple of years ago talked about over 20% of manufacturing jobs in Massachusetts have become STEM jobs. And STEM expands beyond like tech and healthcare, business services, financial services, retailers employ more than 70,000 workers in STEM occupations in Massachusetts. STEM jobs are expected to account for 25% of the total employment growth over the next 10 years. So we, are, we see opportunity there. We want our next geners um, who are diverse, who um, have skills to offer to the workforce to have a slice of that opportunity pie, if you will. So I wanna talk a little bit more of the roles on the next gen team. Each of the teams in each of the regions is led by a supervisor. 
We have a peer mentor, as I mentioned, that's available to all of our next geners. Um, this is a brand new role at the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. We actually have adapted it from the Department of Mental Health, who's had this staff role for a few years now. Um, and there, these are folks with lived experience that can talk about how they're, um, how the way they've met challenges, how the way they've negotiated themselves into the professional world um, can, can be a model for others to do that and really hear and help um, when next geners are feeling challenged or want to talk to somebody that's um, maybe faced similar challenges as they have. Our family partners, in a very similar way, they come from um, places of lived experience with a disability or caring for someone with a disability and understand that families need a place to lean as well. And they need to be at the table in order for our next geners to be successful. And that table needs to be a welcoming and inclusive one for families as well. They need to have a voice. They need to be able to ask questions. They need to be able to raise issues in a space that is welcoming of that and um, really includes them on the team. I talked about career counselors, employment success specialists. I talked about our benefits counselor and our specialty counselor. What's cool about I Think Next Gen is um, our next geners are served by every single one of these folks on the team. They might not be forward facing. They might not be talking to them on a regular basis. There might be uh, team members that are stepping forward and then as the work evolves, stepping back. But all of these folks on this team are aware of who this next gener is and what their career path is. And on a regular basis, they bring forward what they think that they can do to help. Um, and our next gener kind of picks and chooses who's, who's um, the most active people on their team at the time. I uh, wanna make sure folks understand that general vocational rehabilitation is also available to people who live in the catchment areas of Lawrence and Lowell and Worcester and Springfield and Boston and Braintree and Roxbury. Um, they're not automatically diverted into our program because they're 18 to 30 years old. They have a choice. So it's important um, Michelle, for them to- Yes. Oh, sorry, this sorry. is Rebecca. Um, yeah. If you could slow down just a little bit, please. Sure, sure, sorry. No problem. Um, so it's important for our next geners to understand uh, their choice. As folks identify themselves through our inquiry form or calling us, we try and uh, really explain that choice to them and their supporters or family members. But here are just some sort of highlights of the differences. In the general vocational rehabilitation model, uh, vocational rehabilitation or VR counselor primarily works one-on-one -on -one with the young adult and other resources are introduced as partners. Whereas in next-gen careers, I was just explaining there's that team approach for the life of the case. In vocational rehabilitation, uh, internships and apprenticeships are not highly utilized. They're not the first place that folks go to to get uh, uh, people to work, whereas that is where we go to automatically. We really want to see if a, a next gener could benefit from an apprenticeship or an internship. We know that those are common pathways into STEM careers, so it's much more part of the regular service. Uh, in vocational, in general, vocational rehabilitation. Support is provided for participants currently pursuing associates or bachelor's degrees. Whereas in next gen careers, support is provided for participants who wanna work imminently and are seeking shorter term training opportunities. So if we do have a next gen that says, you know, I wanna work in STEM, I wanna find out what my internal capacities are. I like working with a team but I want to enroll in college full-time come May after I graduate from high school. And I'm not gonna be able to, or not wanting to work in balance academics at the same time. 
then a better pathway for them would be the vocational, would be general vocational rehabilitation, not next gen careers. And we've helped people into that pathway, uh, even if it's not coming in with us to next gen, we've been able to help them access uh, vocational rehabilitation if that's a better fit. Uh, peer and family support and general vocational rehabilitation, if provided, that's externally sourced. So folks are looking outside of our system for those services, where, as I've explained, in next-gen careers, the teams automatically include peer mentors and family partners. Michelle, we were given another just little nudge to slow down just a bit. Sure. Um, so specialty counselors operate independently in vocational rehabilitation, whereas in next-gen careers, specialty counselors focused on sensory disabilities are part of the teams. And that was a lot of information that I went through a little bit <laughs> too fast, I think. So if folks, I just want to remind you, if you have questions, you're I'm going to take them at the end of the presentation, and um, you can use the chat or the Q&A uh, if you want to remind yourself what those are, but I'm happy to take any questions, provide clarification, or revisit any of this um, then. Each of our regions have a regional supervisor. And the slide here has their contact information. In the north, we have Cheryl Barraclough. In the south, we have Deval Raval. And in the west, we have Krista De Gregorio. Each of them are happy to take questions, have conversations with folks, talk directly to next geners. That's our very favorite thing to do, or uh, talk to their families or other service providers that might be in their lives uh, to see if next gen might be a fit uh, for anybody. And now I'm happy to take any questions. I think it might be easiest if I stop sharing the presentation. There we go. Okay, we were keeping a list. I don't know if Michaela, if you wanted to share some of the questions or I can. Um, I, I, I can just, right now I, I see one that says, how soon are next geners placed at an internship? Good question. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> and that really depends on the next gen, on the next gener themselves. What what their interests are, what if they need training first, if they want to do career exploration, if they've been able to identify a field. Um, but it it really is an individualized program. So I don't think I could, I don't even, we just opened our doors in October for service. So I don't think I even have an average amount of time to give you yet. I will, but not yet. Eh, sí, pero todavía aún no ha comenzado. Uh, let's see, there's quite a few. Would you like some help with the questions? Sorry, I was stuck yeah, on go for it. Panel trying to help out with what was going on. Got it. Um, okay, so the next question that I'm seeing um, is can 18 plus? So can 18 year old high school students enroll in next gen or would they be better served by VR? It depends on it depends on them. An 18 year old Michelle, high school could you repeat the question. The ASL interpreter missed everything. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. So can someone a, a student, a high school student who is 18 years old and older can they enroll in next gen or would they be better served by vocational rehab? If I'm understanding the, the question correctly, um, an 18 year old who's graduating from high school would be able and lives in one of the service areas or the catchment areas 
could be served by either model. They would right. get to choose. If they're not graduating, if they're gonna be in high school until 22, um, we would really need to look a little bit deeper into how work with next gen would support or potentially disrupt their academic goals. It, the program is really designed for folks that are ready to move to work. And what we found just in these first few months is um, there are some 21 year olds that are ready to go to work. They're sort of coming to the tail end of their work. They're focused on transition and academically and at, at school, there isn't much left for them to complete there. So we have been able to serve some. It's so individualized though. The best thing to do is really connect the next gen and in, in their families with us or if there's questions that comes up in transition planning um, to, you know, let us take a look at or speak directly to the folks that are that are considering the service and get the details on the next geners interests and availability. Okay, um, I see another one of a question. If an individual already receives employment services from DDS, mm -hmm. which is the Department of Developmental Services, how will next gen fit in? So we do have a number of um, referrals from DDS because somebody's receiving DDS services or DDS employment services does not make them ineligible for next gen. Um, again, we, we have to look at, at what their individual situation is, but they certainly remain eligible for the service. Great. Okay. Um, can we take another question or would you like to continue? I would. Continue? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Oh, continue answering. <laughs> oh, continue answering, got Sorry, you. I'm done. <laughs> Take another question, please. <laughs> there was a question, do next geners have to choose vocational rehab or next gen, or can they be enrolled in both? Um, there is a mechanism for them to be enrolled in both but no one has used it yet in full disclosure. Um, okay. If they're currently involved in um, neck, in, if, they're, if they're involved in vocational rehabilitation and they're interested in next gen, they should talk to their vocational rehabilitation counselor or you can call a regional supervisor um, and we'll talk to the vocational rehabilitation counselor to coordinate mm -hmm you know, how we can best serve them. I'm trying to think of an example of when you would be enrolled in both. And it might be that you are already getting um, services quite successfully. You have a relationship with a service provider, um, maybe a job coach or, um, or, or another type of service. Um, and all you want to do is work on self cares and that curriculum is of interest to you, but you don't want to move into um, fully into the next gen team, et cetera. We might be able to do some service coordination there. In most cases, we have about over 200 next geners in the program right now. All of them are just in next gen. Some of them have transferred from vocational rehabilitation. So um, that model was something that they were finished with or just it wasn't working for them fully. So they wanted to try our model. So they came over. Okay. Uh, a couple more. We've got quite a few. Uh, what is the process if someone is a next gener? What does a typical day look like? Does the person go to a location where skills are evaluated and then uh, an internship is decided? Great question. Um, it can look like a, a lot of things. Uh, we have next geners that come to our office. We meet them at Dunkin' Donuts. We do a lot of work in libraries. We've gone to homes. Um, and the next gener works, could work on 
say they are interested in developing their self-advocacy skills. So they um, may need to ask for an accommodation at school or work, or they may need to be advocating at home for a different um, you know, schedule than what's expected of them and their family responsibilities. So we would focus on advocacy and we have a learning experience, which is a curriculum in action, if you will, to help them develop those skills. At the same time, they may be um, wondering what they might be good at. So we have a, a toolkit. We have a number of tools that looks at, um, looks at their skills, looks at the job prospects that might be out there for them, looks at their history. Uh, we have a workforce development tool where we do um, research on training programs that could potentially be a fit. And we work with the next genner to see what is drawing them? What might they be interested in? And then we would move along the process from there. In the meantime, say they're working on that self-advocacy and it might be the, um, causing some questions at home of, um, you know, we need this next gen home at six o'clock and he's saying he wants to work at night in there that we're not sure we're able to support that. We might be able to bring in a family partner who's going to help the next genner and the family understand exactly um, what the impact this is going to be on family dynamics and how viable the plan might be or where there might be potential for adjustment. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that's my best description of, of what next gen work is looking like day to day. Okay, so there was a question on how would service delivery look, but it sounds like you just answered that, I think. I think um, so. Yeah. So a uh, question. So if an 18 year old doesn't want to go to college and isn't in next gen, it isn't in a catchment area. So a next gen regional targeted area. What does Mass Rehab do for them to find a job, job skills or an internship, et cetera? Yeah, great question. So if they live out of the catchment area, vocational rehabilitation is still fully available across the Commonwealth. And, um, and you don't have to go to college that we, there's similar services available to identify training programs, skills based programs, um, job training programs. So sorry. I'm, I'm being there's just it's a lot of text so if you could just slow down a little bit sure yep um i think the question was can general vocational rehabilitation be available yes if i live out of the catchment area and i don't want to go to college and the answer is absolutely yes And so if they wanted to learn more about what mass rehab can do for them, what would you advise? So um, I would advise going to the MRC, Mass Rehab, Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission website, mass.gov backslash MRC. And um, we have navigators that can get, answer questions from anybody from the public on general vocational rehabilitation. If somebody has a lot of questions about next gen careers, um, our navigators will typically connect you to somebody on my staff. Um, and that's, you know, that's how I would advise you to get more information. And thank you, um, Rebecca and Yvonne for putting that into the chat. Do any of your current participants have hearing and vision loss? Yeah, so we have, um, last I checked, about 12 um, next geners who I know are legally blind. Um, and I know that because uh, Massachusetts Commission for the Blind referred them. Um, and I believe we have uh, fewer deaf, hard of hearing uh, next geners, but I know we have at least a couple because we've needed to, um, you know, get ASL interpretation uh, service in there for them. Um, we are hiring, seeking to hire a specialty counselor who will be on staff um, that is proficient in ASL uh, and we just haven't been able to find one yet. 
but that job is posted. <laughs> if anybody is interested, it's out of Boston. Great. Um, I see another question. Uh, can a student still be in high school or, and be in pre and next gen at the same time? Yeah, so um, as I had mentioned that um, it, it really depends on the student. Being in pre or being in high school does not dis, you know, um, exclude you from being involved with next gen careers, but we, we have to be the right service at the right time and we don't wanna be disruptive to other goals. Um, so it's best to connect with us and um, have our next genner and their family get their questions answered so that they can decide if now is the right time for next gen or not. As you know, folks can be in such different places um, between 18 and 22 in right. pre -ets or in high school. Uh, so it's, you know, um, it's always best to get as much information from the individual as possible to see if we can help. We want to help though. So if possible, we will serve them. Does the next gen program assist with college or training expenses like vocational rehab does? Uh, training expenses, yes. Um, and in certain circumstances, yes, we can play, pay for some college um, coursework if it's going to lead um, to a, a a job imminently. So if somebody needs to finish a class or um, what we're finding now is some of these classes, particularly in technology um, can be offered and folks might not be certified, but they could still be hired and they wanna go down that path. But for most folks that wanna go to college, vocational rehabilitation, the general vocational rehabilitation is a better fit for them. Great, okay. Uh... What is the intake process like? I'm glad you asked that. Um, so we have on the MRC webpage, or if you just Google MRC Next Gen Careers, um, that'll bring you to our landing page. Sometimes that's faster than navigating through the mass.gov site. Um, we have an inquiry form. It is what I think is the shortest application form for any service anywhere. We ask name, date of birth, where you live, how do we get in touch with you, and how did you hear about us? And then we take the rest on ourselves. So we call the next genner or whoever might be filling that form out on their behalf. We talk to them about next gen, we talk to them about general VR, we talk to them about that we're a service for people with disabilities, and ask them about that. And then we take them through the eligibility process. So when we were in the design phase of next gen careers, uh, our families and our next geners told us that they didn't want to jump through hoops. They didn't want to fill out 15 pages of paperwork to get our service. And we really heard that and tried to make it um, and try to make it as efficient and easy as possible to get in. Great. Um, what previous challenges in serving this population was NextGen designed to address? Great question. So um, what the Commonwealth found with general vocational rehabilitation was um, we were underserving certain communities, um, racial and ethnic, particularly Black, Latinx, and Asian. Um, we were underserving 18 to 30 year olds in the sense of what was available to them in STEM. Um, and then there were also communities of individuals that weren't um, finding themselves tremendously successful in general vocational rehabilitation in the 18 to 30 year old demographic. And that was young adults with autism and intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we are trying to see what these com new components, how they will do in those communities of people in those demographics to see if the teamwork works better, the self cares works better, the career extended support works better. Um, we will be, you know, really taking a look at that. And if it is, we're gonna make sure it's available to everybody. 
Fantastic. Um, there's a question I'm not quite sure I understand. It says, are next gen career partners mentors and or career guiding supporters? Um, I would say both. I think that when a mentoring, um, we try and keep our mentoring with our peer mentors or family partners. When a next gen or says they want that person um, active in their work or um, when, you know, or when another member of the team might say, oh, wow, I could really see the benefit of a mentor here. And the next genner hasn't asked for it, but I'm going to introduce that idea. Um, we try and utilize them that way. But, you know, all of our staff, our employment success specialists, our career counselors, have a really vast, diverse background. So what we're finding with the next geners is they, they're they usually just kind of picking somebody that they connect with, regardless of what their job title is or what they're supposed to be there doing. And I guess that is a little bit of mentorship, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a question about um, whether or not uh, someone could get on a wait list for the areas not covered yet. No, there's no wait list um, for that. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not. The grant will not allow us to go outside of our catchment area until 2026. Can you share more information about the internship process? Are internships for a specific time period? Uh, who finds the internship? Are they paid or unpaid? So the answer is any and all of those things. They may be paid, they may be unpaid. It really depends on the career path and the field that the next gener wants to get into. Um, where they're willing to work, what they're willing to do, and what they're willing to learn. So we are creating partnerships um, with, you know, our traditional partners. I'm just thinking like CVS is jumping to mind, um, as well as new partners. Eversource is a new partner that we have. Um, and it, it really kind of depends on, on the next gen or themselves. So yes, we have the capacity to pay for some internships. And yes, many of them are not paid as well. Excuse me, this is Sharon. Excuse me, Sharon here. Yeah, go ahead. I cannot hear English. I only hear Spanish. Something is wrong. Okay. I need to switch with my team, but I cannot hear English. Okay, so you said that, and I know that there are people working on that. So let's see what happens. Okay. Elizabeth, Thank you for telling You're on until it gets fixed. Thank you, everyone. Got it. Thank you. Uh, another question, is a mentor like a job coach and how long is the mentor with the individual? Um, the mentor is not a job coach and the mentor is available to the individual for the life of their work in NextGen. So um, once we have ne a NextGen are trained and placed into a work situation, um, that they are happy in and want to stay in for a while. We'll, in, um, we're able to offer our, jo our job support. So they're aware now of what promotional opportunities might be. They're aware of where to go when they need support on the job. Um, we'll be looking to close the case. So everybody on the team remains on the case for as long as it's open. Could, could I ask who chooses when a case is closed? I mean, can a next gener decide that they're set up or is someone, how does that work? Yeah, the next gener sets up everything. So they can um, they can decide that they're, that they're not interested in meeting with the team anymore. Um, we do try and move to a place of stability. Um, 90 days of 
Um, employment is a benchmark for us, but unlike vocational rehabilitation, it's not a requirement. So if a next genner does need continued support on a job for over 90 days, we are able to serve them with that. Um, but we will be looking for some target benchmarks of, um, you know, of case closure once they're employed. And if they, you know, obviously choose not to work with us anymore. That's their choice too. Thank you. Have any of your next geners closed their case? I mean, yet? Um, not actively. So we haven't had any next Casos? geners. No, activamente no. Uh, um, but we have, you know, we work with young adults. So pero si trabajamos con jóvenes, sí. Yeah. E novamente porque esse é um projeto de demonstração threshold for hanging in with them and reaching out to them and say all right you know it's clearly not a great week um can we get back to you next week so we haven't had any folks that um have you know left but we've been <laughs> we have been ghosted here or there <laughs> okay and uh another question how many next gen mentors can the adult with disabilities work with? So maybe you need to go over the team again. Yeah, sure. So every team has one mentor. So we have one peer mentor on each next gen team. And that is who all of the next geners within that team have access to. Um, so it's not a daily mentoring. It's not a daily three month mentoring service that they're gonna get. It's um, gonna be more ad hoc. It's gonna be more um, goal driven and the next gen peer mentor may step back when say for instance um, the next gen is now enrolled in training 15 hours a week etc thank you uh, so Michaela and Yvonne am I missing oh there's one uh, is is a peer mentor a person with a similar disability who is working in a stem field um, the peer mentor, we have three peer mentors. They are people with lived disabilities and they work for MRC. So they're in our fields of vocational rehabilitation. Okay, so not a STEM field. Thank you. Now, I asked every question I saw. Uh, is there, did I miss anything? If I did, please raise your hand and we can. Um, go to you individually or you can put it in the chat um i just wanted to add rebecca that i noticed when i did the slide deck that we removed the slide for like um how you enroll oh, gosh. <laughs> which is probably very interesting <laughs> to folks so i'm going to adjust this deck and just add that slide back in and send it so yeah. that folks can have that handy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I would remind folks as well that we have a survey. If you, we still have a few minutes, but uh, we sure would love it if you would fill out the survey for this presentation. Um, we work on, uh, we're a nonprofit. We get our funding from uh, grants and contracts and by filling out this form, you're helping us know how we can improve our services and what things are working for us. So uh, the link is in the chat. Please help a mother out. I'm a mother of a child with disabilities and fill out the survey for us so that we can continue bringing you uh, content like this. And if anybody has thought of another question, please raise your hand or put it in the chat. So if they did want to connect with you, Michelle, um, or what you just said about how to enroll, uh, is there something you can tell me I can put in the chat right now and we could also forward to them? Yeah, sure. Why don't I put my email in the chat and as well as our uh, landing page one more time. Would that be so that you? Sure. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. There is, I just want to call out a two after my name. Um, back when I worked 
for another state agency for the Department of Children and Families. I was plain old Michelle Banks. Now I'm Michelle Banks too. Um, and <laughs> let me just get the, grab the link for next gen for you all. And once again, if you could please just take a moment to fill out the survey. Uh, you could also fill it out in Portuguese or Spanish. Um, and we would really appreciate it. And Michelle has put her email address and the link to Next Gen Careers in the chat. Uh, you can also reach out to us uh, at the Federation at transition at fcsn.org with any more questions, other questions about a post-secondary transition, other questions about Next Gen. We will get you, we will either get you the answers or get you to the people who can provide the answers. You got a couple of thanks and thank you for the important work that you're doing, Michelle. So props to you and props to Next Gen Careers Initiative. Thank you all for your partnership and for doing what, what you're doing. Um, I really appreciate you coming out tonight. This has been our absolute pleasure. This is so important. Uh, and I'm so glad that everybody came out and we will continue to support you and support our families. So um, unless there are any more questions, thank everyone so much. Have a wonderful evening. I've thank given you. you six minutes of your life back. <laughs> thank you. We can stop the recording as well. Thanks everyone, have a good evening. Thank you, Sharon.